Good morning, yogis, or afternoon. I don't know what time it is for you. Let's get started in child's pose. So by now with me, you know the drill. Knees as wide as you want. We don't have to take um, the traditional stance. And then let the hips fall towards the heels. And I've been having to settle my way down, taking a couple twists, because I've been walking a lot more than normal, and so my low back is a little broke. Come into yourself here. And just do a quick check-in, right? A little scan. What do you notice in your physical being right now? Is the upper back sore? Are the feet tender? Is the belly hurting? Just, we're just cataloging, right? We're not asking why or how, we're just cataloging. Oh, okay, this, this does not feel, this doesn't feel as best. We're not trying to ask why the author wrote the book. We're just putting it on the shelf if it belongs. Oh, okay, cataloging, got it. Toes hurt, whatever. Okay, you get the drift. And then when you're done with that, maybe do a mental check-in, an emotional check-in. Press up to all fours. Don't worry about your check-in. If you're mid-list, you've got time later. Cow cat. Moving at the pace that serves you. When you're complete, we're going to come to broken toe pose. Tuck your toes under. I have to pick up my knees to make sure my pinky's on the floor. And lift up. So we did that checklist, how's the body. So we're just going to kind of stair step our way up the body today. And part of that is going to include the throat in a whole new way. So we already know that everything emits energy right, as frequency, and there are frequencies that can help the body come back to its neutral point, its less aggravated point. So when we say the OM, the chant OM in a practice, which we don't do very often, uh, we're clearing the throat and we're kind of recalibrating ourselves. So we're, we might try that later, a little recalibration, a couple more breaths, Down dog, pedaling out. Your toes might be extra sensitive, so maybe you turn them the other way, get a little blood flow back. Walk the hands back to the feet, rag doll. Right, and for me, it's like five in the morning. So my back, I just rolled out of bed. My back is a little extra tight, right? I haven't even had my tea yet. So I'm gonna just take some gentle flexions and shifting of the weight and just manipulating around as a more gentle opening. We don't need to force. Walk your hands back to the top of the mat. Down dog. Down. 
Right leg forward, low lunge. Just gonna step into it, untuck the toes, lift up. Down dog. Left side. Right leg, half pigeon. I'm going to keep my torso lifted. Torso lifted. And we're not going to stay here long. Fire walk, double pigeon. Left leg scoops around on top. Making a figure four. Both legs. You can fold forward. Lift up. Other side, half pigeon. So if you're paying attention, we've gone from toes to calves to hamstrings to hip flexors and glutes, which is where we're at now. Double pigeon. Right, set up. You're, you know what you need. Grab your block. Do it, right? We're, many of you have been doing this with me for months now. Fold forward. Rise up, come on to the back. Now we're gonna activate the low back. One bridge pose, lift it up. So we're activating it because we're shifting, shifting the shape of it. Really it's the hammies that are activated, but this is getting a flexion. And release. Arms to a T, knees 90 degrees, take a twist. So now we're obviously low back, and this starts to get up into the mid back and the upper back based on how you carry your stress and your tension. Other side. Back to the center, bring the legs long. We're gonna take a fish pose to get in the middle and upper back, okay? So for me, hands come under the glutes, drop the elbows, and lift. for a moment. Remove the hands. Rolling to one side, just press yourself up to a simple seat. It's time to talk about OM. So OM is two letters in English, O-M, but there's four sounds that occur. So it actually starts A, O, N, silence. It's a lack of sound, but we want to account for silence. So you're going to inhale, and then it's going to go like, Aum. Okay? Many, many times we hear the N 
going on and on and on and on and on. Ideally, the ao and the m are equal. Five counts, five counts. Lots of times when we hear it, and we hear two counts, seven counts, right? Whatever. Uh, that was bad math. That would have been two and eight. Anyways, so just uh, be okay. If you're nervous, if you have people in the room, pause, do this in the shower later, or uh, recalibrate your energy because uh, it doesn't matter who's around, you deserve to be in line, okay? So we're going to just start with a few deep breaths together, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. And begin to come into the pattern where the belly expands on the inhale and contracts on the exhale. When we begin to contract the belly in, you'll notice that you might be able to hold that mm, a little bit longer. Some people do their owning in a musical tone, right? They've got that training. But my opinion is the whole point is to unblock what's stuck. And when we're trying to sound pretty, we're not unblocking anything. Now maybe over time it sounds pretty because it is unblocked. I don't know. I don't know. My throat chopper's always needing some help. So maybe that's like what it's like on the other side of that. I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna start with just a small ohm this next time, okay? So remember, ah, oh, mm, pause. Inhale. So my exhale was still longer. I could have gotten more out of that, right? But in an effort to stay even at the ow and the mm, we had to cut the mm. So that's typically what happens, right? We're not aware and we're so worried we're going to run out of breath. We rush through the ow. And then it keeps going and going and going and going. So let's try again now, understanding how much air is available to you to get through the ohm. Inhale. Um. And so you'll notice, right, that it's like kind of wiggly.
body into the throat. And let's go ahead and take it a step higher to the crown of the head. taking your attention and your awareness there. And maybe you want your awareness is at the crown of your head. And you begin to envision a color or a pattern of your awareness. Maybe it spins. You're going to pick, pick a direction to spin that feels right to you. The belief is counterclockwise. So spinning this way is a healthy and unblocked and open chakra. This is our connection the divine, to the universe, to the great plan. attention back into the rest of your body. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe take some shoulder rolls. Maybe some neck stretches. Inhale the hands to heart center. The place in me that is able to speak my truth without harming others acknowledges that same place in you. And together we say, Namaste. I feel like I need to clarify. Sometimes our truth will hurt people, but there is a difference in us living our truth in a manner that is doing no intentional harm and in living our truth in a manner that is throwing harm in all directions. If some people are harmed by your truth, that is their work. If your truth is not aggressive or attacking, right? A sword can attack or defend. Um, I just felt like I should clarify. Happy truth speaking.